Welcome to the first part of the first unit of Physics 201. In this uh, part of this unit, we are going to be looking at the nature of science from the physics perspective. And for this, I'm going to introduce something called Bode's Law. Now, Bode's Law is not something you need to memorize. It's not something I'm ever going to ask you the specifics of. It is merely something to help illustrate why something is considered science from a physics perspective. Okay. Bode's Law was originally postulated by a gentleman named the Titus of Wittenberg. It was then popularized by Bode, which is why his name is on it. And it is a means of um, predicting and telling where the planets are in the solar system. Okay. So here is the first step to Bode's Law. Um, you start with the number zero. You then use the number three and continue doubling from there. So three, the next entry is six, from six to 12, 12 to 24, and so on. You then take and add four. So now you have four, seven, 10, 16, 28. And then the actual numbers for Bode's Law, you get by dividing by 10. So four becomes 4.4, 4, seven becomes 0.7, 10 goes to one, and so on down. Now, these numbers predict the locations of the planets in the solar system in units called astronomical units. Okay, By definition, one astronomical unit is the distance from the sun to the earth. So it's not surprising that the third entry here is the number one in that unit because the earth is the third planet from the sun. Okay. When Bode's law was popularized, several planets were known. So uh, 1776, we knew the locations of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. You can see that the uh, values for Bode's Law agree reasonably well um, for most of these. Mars is a little off, uh, 1.52 for the modern value versus 1.6 for Bode's Law, uh, as is Saturn, 9.54 versus 10. But in general, it did a pretty good job of saying, hey, here's where the planets are. Okay. Now you'll notice that there are planets we know of that aren't in, both, uh, in the list, so they weren't known in 1776. And there are entries, like at 2.8, where Bode's Law predicts something that we don't know about. So what did they do? They went and they started looking. So the first thing they did was they found Uranus. It's at 19.2 versus 19.6, but not that far off, no worse than a couple of the other ones. They then went and they found Ceres. Ceres, Ceres is exactly at uh, 2.8 astronomical units. It was discovered in 1801 and it is part of the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And it's actually a fairly big asteroid. Um, so, so far, so good. So far, so good. Um, this is where things kind of all fall apart because we know that there are other planets in the solar system, like what's going on with Neptune, right? Well, regrettably, Neptune, discovered in 1846, falls at a value of 30.1 astronomical units which Bode's Law does not predict at all. Uh, Pluto, similarly, is at 39.4. It also is not predicted by Bode's Law. So now, here's the question. Obviously, Bode's Law just failed. It just failed. We will agree that it is no longer a valid law. But was it ever a law of physics? Okay. So now let's think about three possible criteria. In order for something to be a scientific law, to be a law of physics, it needs to meet three points. So it needs to be supported by data, meaning it has to have a scientific basis. It needs to be able to make predictions and it needs to be testable. Does Bode's law meet these three criteria or did it prior to failing? Did it make a prediction? Yes, it made a prediction. Uh, it said there should be something at 2.8. They went looking, they found Ceres. So they made a prediction and they tested it by going to look. 
So it certainly makes the last two criteria. But does it have a scientific basis? Is it supported by data? Okay, now let's go back a little bit here and return to where Bode's Law started. We started with the zero, number zero. We then used the number three and we doubled all the way up. We then added four and divided by 10. Why did we do that? And you're like, well, we did that because that's what you said to do here, Dr. Murphy. Yes, I agree. That, that's, what, that's how Bode's Law is formulated. Does it have a scientific basis? The answer is no. Yeah, it, it made predictions. Yeah, it was testable. There's no rhyme or reason for going 0, 3, double, add 4, and divide by 10. No scientific basis whatsoever. It just happened to work. So from the very beginning, Bode's Law was not a law of physics. Remember, I'm not going to ask you specifics over this information. So for example, I will never ask you what the modern value for Saturn's orbital radius is in astronomical units. Right. What I am going to ask you to know over this material is these three criteria. What does it take to be a scientific law and to be able to think about other um, scenarios and defend whether they're a scientific law or not. That concludes Unit 1.